Hello everybody. Welcome to t -Pose Corner. This is Travis. And we are playing a mono white deck today. With a little combo that features individual creature infinite removal. Something that I stumbled across during the early access event for uh, Wilds of Eldraine. We'll see if it pops up. In this particular match, think right let's just lock everything down if they don't have a way to get rid of enchantments we might bring that back later only have one copy of this but you know, it's good when the opponent has things in the first couple of turns and I've got nothing. Hallowed Haunting! Let's go! Okay, this is a problem. Repair and recharge. It's a big problem. I made a deck a few days ago called Repair and Recharge. It's the first time I've used the card, really. I used it with artifacts. It was a great deck. It was a lot of fun. I had four copies of Repair and Recharge in the deck. Decided instead of artifacts, I had uh, Portal to Phyrexia in there. And I didn't want to keep making the same, you know, using Repair and Recharge with Portal to Phyrexia. I'd already done it just a couple days ago. So I said, okay, we won't have artifacts in this deck. Let's concentrate on enchantments. So I put together a tribal enchantment deck. Had four copies of Repair and Recharge. And they kept giving me uh, one and two copies at the very beginning. And it, it was just not useful. It would be a dead card for five turns. This is what I need. The princess takes flight. Let's see. Sacrifice another Phyrexian. This is not a Phyrexian, so we don't care. And pass the turn. Now we've already got our engine down, and unless they can destroy enchantments, we're good to go. Now, Repair and Recharge, I cut it down from four copies in this deck to one because they just kept giving it to me before I ever had five mana. And... I feel like it's okay for me to sacrifice a creature. I'm gonna break that anyway. You don't need enchantment sagas. I've got enchantment sagas. You don't need them. All right, let's use Meticulous Excavation to bring the Princess Takes Flight. A funny thing's going to happen here. Unlike every other enchantment card, instead of this going back to the battlefield, it goes into the exile zone. It's really lovely. Plus, I'm going to cast another enchantment. We're going to go hit him for four. Now, they could easily have removal there and swing in for three, but nobody cares. Because now, every other turn, I can remove something. 
And of course they have graveyard hate. Because I have repair and recharge, and I have a way to get in my graveyard, so we can't have that, can we? But they do not attack. And I'm going to get rid of another creature. We're going to trigger Hallowed Haunting again. Ooh, ten! That's nice! I feel like you have to chump block that. Do you not? Do you not have to jump block that? They take 10 points to the face. Was I supposed to attack with more than just the one creature? It's going to get flight with chapter 2 here in a second. This is the dream though. We've got our re infinite removal combo and we've got a hallowed haunting. Who could ask for anything more? One removal. I don't care. I got, don't have anything in my graveyard now, so who cares? Second removal. Not to for, go for the throats. That would be gosh. You got to have something else. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice a creature token. They did it right. Okay, we'll get rid of the token that's tra that's tapped. Oh, wow target a creature target a creature you control got a chump lock now to stay alive and that way we didn't have to pay the ward cost and try and target it over here uh, we will go ahead and get rid of this now so that this is permanently exiled We never actually cast a spell during that entire hand. All of that was enchantment saga driven. And now, yep, we just exile it again and they knew what was going to happen. And that is as good as I can ask for anything. I should quit the recording now. I should say we're done. That's all from the quarter. No. We'll keep going. You've got to give Arena a chance, right? There's a team of, of Wizards employees that watch my gameplay. And when I create a new deck, this one's called Repairing Enchantments, um, they, they have to have a chance to sabotage me. So I have to keep playing because they have to start meddling. All right. Um, let, let me walk through this real quick. Repair and recharge. I had four copies. I did a deck a couple of days back, and it's, so it's, it's very high on the, the YouTube page there that you can find. It's just called Repair and Recharge, and I used Portal to Phyrexia. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was great fun. Um, used it very nicely. You know, won some, lost some, and I decided instead of keeping uh, Portal to Phyrexia in all of my Repair and Recharge decks as a crutch, you've already seen it. So no artifacts this time, just enchantments. And I had done a Recycling Planeswalker deck with Meticulous Excavation before. So I actually, um, I had started to put in a couple of Planeswalkers and I said, you know what, no Planeswalkers either. We're just going to restrict ourselves to enchantments. Because I like to do theme decks and I like to do things that maybe you all haven't seen yet, which is hard, right? So there's the Planeswalkers are so popular for white. They're around everywhere. So I just tried to keep those out. Um, but what I did notice is that I had way too many five drops showing up and I only had six in the entire deck and and I was still getting like two or three repair and recharges before the game was over and I might not even be up to five lands yet so that was just way too many so I do have one copy so that if they do destroy a particular enchantment that I need I can go get it from the graveyard assuming they don't have graveyard hate which more than half of my opponents during playtesting of this deck had Graveyard Hate, which maybe that's a coincidence. But 
what I did instead was I did I took a page from something I discovered during the early access event to Wilds of Eldraine. Princess takes flight. This card is rated very low for limited. So if you're going to play with limited, you exile up to one target creature for the first chapter. In the second chapter, your target creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and gains flying, which is, makes for a nice hit. Then you return the exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So you could do it on one of your cards that has an entering to battlefield trigger you want to hit twice. Or you could just temporarily remove one of theirs, or you could exile a token creature, right? But in limited, it's given a very low rating. However, during the early access event, um, what I did was I, I tend to put one arm behind my back, right? A lot of the content creators are used to playing the meta and playing Mythic Ranked, and they will take their favorite deck and they will put in one or two Eldraine cards and say, you know, here's maybe one card I found that would, um, you know, change the meta or add to the meta, and you could actually put in the deck and you wouldn't lose any value. Maybe it adds value. And I go play those decks, and I get my butt whipped. Because I'm playing like 90 to 100% with the, uh, the new expansion only. So what I did was I made a deck out of this card focused with Eldraine, and I only had basically one card. Maybe it had a board wipe in there, but I had Meticulous Excavation. It was a non-Eldraine card that I had, because these two combined gives you infinite removal for a single creature. And what happens is all the other cards, if we do exile, let's just take a look at, let's make them enchantments. This is uh, kind of important to it, right? Um, here, ossification, exile target creature, planeswalker, and opponent controls until ossification leaves the battlefield. Uh, borrowed time, very highly used card. Exile, non-land permanent until borrowed time leaves the battlefield um, here in the trenches exile target per non-land permit you don't control until trenches leaves the battlefield all of these enchantments even temporary lockdown until temporary lockdown leaves the battlefield and i have that here right so all of these enchantments have this little case where you can exile you can remove it but if you can destroy the enchantment you'll get it back this card is different because it's an enchantment saga the exile and the return are not in the same place under the rules templates. So I don't know if this was intentional design by wizards or if this was an oversight that allows this. But with meticulous excavation, we can return a target permanent we control to our hand. It's a, We can only do it like a sorcery. We can only activate it during our turn. But when we exile the creature and then we use meticulous excavation to bring this back up into our hand, the return the creature part it's interrupted because it doesn't get to chapter three so if you get rid of this enchantment the creature does not go back onto the battlefield it goes into the exile zone because it's already in the exile zone and there's nothing in the rules template for this card that allows it to get back to the battlefield until you get to chapter three and we stopped it from getting to chapter three so we short circuit the card and as it turns out if we have uh, six lands out we could bring it back up into our hand, get rid of whatever card was exiled, and then bring it down and exile another creature the same turn. So if you have six open mana, you have infinite creature removal one per turn for the rest of the game. Kind of fun. Okay, what else do we have? If we don't get Meticulous Excavation out, or if they destroy that enchantment, we've got Break the Spell. So if we've taken away like a 7-7 seven, seven creature with Princess Takes Flight, and we don't have a way to recycle it, we can just break the spell we will destroy this enchantment, we exile that enemy creature, we just don't get the enchantment back, we can't recycle it, but we do get to draw a new card after using Break the Spell. The rest of the deck is basically a bunch of enchantments that hopefully we could also recycle with Meticulous Excavation. Uh, we have Air of Enlightenment to scry to and gain two life. We've got Hopeful Vigil to get a 2-2 White Knight creature token with Vigilance. We've got Machiko's Reign of Truth. Uh, any artifacts and enchantments, the target creature gets plus one, plus one for each of them, and we've got nothing but enchantments for the most part. We do have resolute reinforcements, which you can flash in for two one one creatures, and we can maybe recycle that. We've got three battles, Invasion of Belanon, for two reasons. One, um, since I already used um, artifacts with repair and recharge, I decided I wasn't going to do artifacts this time. But the closest cousin that enchantments have, besides artifacts, is battles. 
So here I could also bring battles back up with meticulous excavation, bring these back down and still get a 2-2 token with vigilance. And it turns into an enchantment later if I manage to knock it out. So that, that fits with the enchantment theme. We've got one copy of Invasion Dominaria, uh, get four life and a card draw, and I might just recycle that and never take it out. So I never end up with the, the Flying Vigilant Angel if I can just keep getting life and card draw by recycling it. Lorna, the third path, this destroys their artifacts on your enchantments. Loyal Griff is a one with Flash. When it enters the battlefield, you can return another creature you control to its owner's hand. So it's got to be one that I control. Um, and so maybe we save Lauren, maybe we save Resolute Reinforcements, that kind of thing. There's not a lot of targets, but the Princess Takes Flight we know about now. We've got Restoration of a Ganjo. So if they do destroy Meticulous Excavation, we can get it back with the Chapter 2 here to discard a card and return target permanent card with mana value 2 or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. If uh, we don't, if we're short on land, maybe we recycle this, bring it back up the next turn, and, and use it to go find another land. Temporary lockdown. I got one copy of it, so I put it in here. This is for the the aggro decks that have something down on first turn, turn one and turn two, and uh, I really can't afford to get swarmed. Hollowed haunting is kind of the win condition, right? I mean, I can sit here and remove everything that they they have until they just quit out of frustration, which has happened already in my playtesting. Uh, but since I've got all these other enchantments, as long as you control seven or more enchantments, creatures you control have flying and vigilance, and whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you get a white spirit creature token, and that creature's power and toughness are equal to the total number of spirits you end up controlling. Uh, we have Helia, the Radiant Dawn from March of the Machines. When it enters the battlefield, return target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand, so as long as they don't have graveyard hate, we can get some other stuff back, anything that we lose. Uh, and we have one copy of Cigar to Splendor, so that we can get uh, life gain and card draw, possibly, if we ever get an advantage on the battlefield, which might be tough. We've got Elish Norn, Mother of Machines, 4-7 with Vigilance. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability to, contri to trigger, it triggers a second time. Permanence for the opponent, they don't trigger. So if our opponent has an entry into battlefield effect, Elish Norn cancels it out. I owe the Dawn Sky 5-4 with Vigilance and Flying, and when it dies, we'll probably be doing the first one. Look at the top seven cards of our library. Put non-land permanent cards with total mono value four or less from among them onto the battlefield. We've got four board wipes only, by invitation only. Choose a number between 0 and 13. You sacrifice that many and expel the interlopers from Eldraine. Choose a number between 0 and 10. These I like to refer as my two Dial and Nuke cards. I love them very much. I only have, I think, two copies of each. Uh, but here is 0 and 10 and destroy all creatures with greater than or equal to the chosen number. And then one solitary number uh, copy of Repair and Recharge, because as I said, um, even having three in my deck, I was still getting two before I got to turn five. And that was happening all through my playtesting. It was really disturbing. So I just had no choice. I couldn't do a full Repair and Recharge deck again. Uh, Arena wasn't going to allow it. The, the environment is so fast with people trying to knock you out by turn four sometimes that you, you really can't have too many five drop cards that are just going to be dead cards in your hand if you don't have ramp it's a sure it's like a death wish if I get to five and have a board wipe I can at least use the board wipe Four lands. And a way to get a fifth. So if they don't kill us by turn five, we've got a way to equalize the board, right? If we're going against mono red, we don't necessarily always make it to turn five, though. But they didn't have anything out on turn one, so they're going kind of slowly. There, if you need more lands, you got them now. 
There we go. We got a Kamano Faces Kakazan. Let's discard the one they know we have. Play this and put out Cigar to Splendor while we can. Now the heat's kind of on. They'll know we'll get card draw if they don't get our life down each time. We usually expect to see them with a creature with haste or direct damage spell. They didn't have a creature? This is very strange for mono red aggro. Okay, that gives us card draw. Um, let's go ahead and do Invasion of Dominaria. And... I'm gonna slow roll this because I feel like they're gonna have a burn down the house or something. This will still keep our, our card draw for Cigar to Splendor. They might have something to kill the Architect, but we still have the 1-1 one, one Chump Blocker. Yeah, so they get a plus two. That keeps their creature alive. And exiles ours. She's not cool, man! But we still get card draw. Hello, Haunting. Hopeful Vigil, which is enchantment, which triggers Hallowed Haunting. And triggers Cigar to Splendor. And Red has five cards and a couple of creatures. Two, two. That's it? Or are you gonna do more? Lightning strike to get rid of one not to the face to prevent my card draw. Just gives me more card draw. Ooh! I don't have meticulous excavation yet. So. Everybody out of the pool. They did nothing. They did nothing. This is like really bad card draw from Mono Red. I mean, they're not out of it yet, but it doesn't look good for them. I don't even have anything Heli can bring out of the graveyard still. <laughs> now they go for the, they go for the face damage to try and stop Cigar to Splendor and then give up the ghost. Yeah, we beat Mono Red Aggro for a change. Yeah, we like that. Mono Red takes us out at least half the time, if not more. So we always have to relish that. There was a, a time about a year ago where the the environment for Red was not very good, and I felt genuine pity for Mono Red. Just because if they weren't going to win, it was just so obvious so fast that there was just nothing they could do. They either got you or they just had no chance at all. And I feel like they've put up enough different cards in the last couple of expansions that they've 
they've sort of let the pendulum swing back into Mono Red's favor a little bit. Two restoration of the Ganjos is good for ramping. Just making sure I hit my land drops. Yeah, we'll go get these first. Thins the deck out ahead of time. If they're going to flood us out with land, maybe they'll do it early on. Soldier deck? Well... How do we want to do this? Let's do it this way. As long as they don't bring down a Myrel this turn, I'll be okay. Okay, we're still going to be okay. Got somebody on the ground in meticulous excavation brings the princess back up. This goes into the exile zone and pass the turn. You can tap out for my rail now if you want. I won't mind one bit. I'm very close to getting six lands, which is all I need for the infinite removal trick. Oh, like we care about that. We, we do not. <laughs> we do not care about that. Okay, how do we want to do this? I feel like... Okay, let's do Restoration of the Ganjo. We'll go get our sixth land that we desperately need. And then we do Lauren. Lauren gets rid of the enchantment. We can attack with somebody with Vigilance and get another Chump Locker. <laughs> well, that's all they have. Maybe I shouldn't be laughing, but I've got the combo. So... They just really can't do anything. And if they do have a counterspell at the right time, I've got a board wipe. Wow. Can't believe they attacked. Shoot, I could put Machiko's Reign of Truth out. That's okay. Um, decline. Just put the land down. Bring Lauren back up. Bring Lauren back down. Get rid of their enchantment. Do another attack. Get another chump locker. They can boost up their creatures now if they want. But whatever they have will not be enough. Another... <laughs> really? That's a lot of uh, sort of removal, so to speak. Still want to? No, they don't want to trade. Okay, smart on their part. Okay, how do we want to do this? Um, I think we just get rid of my rail. and then we bring it back up.
Oh, no attackers this time. Not scared of that. to the fire and let's actually bring Lauren back up pass the turn and that's all they got and it's not gonna be enough can gain some of uh, this can come back up exile that for good we'll attack with this for five princess takes flight comes down again get rid of Russian tactician and that's all I need to do I get plus two again. I bring this back up. We exile your creature. I bring Lauren back down. We get rid of this puppy. And then we do Machiko's Reign of Truth finally. Good game. And then we attack with these two. And they take it because they ran out of ammo and they knew they couldn't match us anymore. There we go. We beat Mono Red Aggro. We beat Soldier Decks, which are fast aggro. Demonstrated the combo. Got a card. It's a good night. We'll do one more. We've got to give Magic a chance to beat us. It's very strange. I created a repair and recharge deck. It did really well. And then the next time I create a repair and recharge deck, it just gives me repair and recharge all the time up front. And just guarantees that I'm not going to have the same results. There's the combo. So as long as we don't get land starved, we'll be okay. We haven't gotten land starved yet tonight, so we're kind of overdue for that too. And is this going to be a haughty gin deck, I wonder? Counter spells could be a problem for us. That's unusual. We don't see that that often. All right, we have to worry about fading hopes. We have to worry about the shore ups, but they use two mana. So let's see if we can get rid of Delver of Secrets at all. Okay, they bounce it, which we're fine with. Bring it back down, okay. I'm just gonna bring this back up because it's the only copy I have right now. There's very few spells that can counter my activation effect. There's a couple, but they're uncommonly used.
Let's go try and get another land. They use negate. Okay, we will be done. That one gets through. Let's try this puppy again. It works! Get rid of Sludge Monster. Excellent. It's exactly what we need, because now I can recycle this without worrying about counter spells anymore. That one goes away. Next creature removal. counter spell and they use casualty for it so they get to transform the cipher and I'll be done Okay, so we'll bring down Hallowed Haunting. Then we cast the Princess Takes Flight. We get rid of the Flyer, and now we have a Chunk Blocker to save us on the life, and in the meantime, a second copy of Meticulous Excavation to give us a second Chunk Blocker. It's knocking along. Okay, so let's go bring you back up. Do you have a counter spell? They do not have a counter spell. We get the next one. We'll go ahead and attack for five. Um, I don't need to get rid of that. I don't need a 4-4 Flying Angel. And I'm wondering what these cards are now. Target a creature you control. Bring you back up. Bring you back up. 
could have used one more land, but... Hit you for five, and we got two blockers. Cast this, right? It can get to be an expensive deck because, depending on how much you want to return and cast again each time, they've got a lot of flyers, so a lot of evasion going on. Really? I can block that one. How did you do that? Maybe they figure it's the only way to keep these under control? Even if they have a counter spell, they can't stop the Hallowed Haunting from creating the creature token. Seems like overkill to use on a 1-1. One -one. But in the meantime, let's gain some life back and draw a card. Look at that. Just bring this back up. There's no reason not to use our energy while we have it. Again, we don't touch the battle. We just want to use the battle for life gain and card draw. And this is why I really want wizards to give us an option like a toggle up here when the battle's done so we can actually get to, you know, give it their opponent's choice but ask them, you know, hey, I'll show you my hand, what I had. Can you show me yours? Because I'm wondering how the makeup of this deck is that they have so many cards and they're not able to use many of them this deep into the match. game. I didn't even need to use my board wipes. Alright, well that's all I have time for. Did we just go undefeated? We didn't go undefeated in my playtesting, but that's when I had four copies of Repair and Recharge. All right, I'm going to do another Repair and Recharge deck, this time with the Planeswalkers. This gave you a break from the Planeswalkers for a change. I think by, by habit, by mentality, I've got a control mentality. So Planeswalkers and Board Wipes used to be my bread and butter. I think I've been actively staying away from those as much as I could. Lately, just make sure I give everybody variety. But I've been away from them for so long that it's like I feel the pull I feel like I need to use them but anyway this is pretty good we don't I don't have a lot of viewers yet right I only have uh, I have under 300 subscribers so you guys kinda got a leg up if you want to take advantage of this particular combination for, for infinite removal because I haven't seen anybody else using it anywhere and uh, I, I discovered it when I was looking through the Eldrain cards uh, I hit upon it because I'm a fan of meticulous excavation I use it uh, every now and then in my decks when uh, very few people do and uh, so my, my brain made the connection right away that because the template rules for this card are written different from any other exile card even uh, possibly another enchantment saga um, maybe it would work um, Elspeth Conqueror's Death I'd have to look up the, the way that the rules are maybe it would work there as well but that's uh, yeah well but you wouldn't need to worry about it, because technically the idea of the, the, the card returning being the enemy's card um, would be Chapter 3, whereas the Chapter 3 for Elspeth's Conqueror's Death just gets something out of your graveyard, so you wouldn't need to worry about it. I think this card is unique in its design. And again, I don't know if Wizards did this intentionally or if it's an oversight, but 
we've got single target creature infinite removal with this only two cards and uh, everything else you can design around is just like butter you know it's just like icing on the cake for if you can get a cigar to splendor out you can run away with the game hollowed haunting of course turns out to be very good um, and then all of these others you can just we could recycle them with meticulous excavation so you want to scry and gain life you can you know if you've got the energy to do it you want to keep getting tokens out you can um, we could recycle Machiko's Reign of Thru Truth and just keep flussing up things with our flyers. Um, and uh, The Princess Takes Flight, the second chapter, giving things flyers, really helps for us when we're ready to finally go on the attack. Uh, because for some reason, I mean, we're able, if they have flyers, we can take them out with chapter one, and then they don't have another flyer by the time it's time for chapter two. And the vigilance for white really, really helps in terms of being able to keep a defending line and still go ahead and hit the opponent in their face. And then if that doesn't work, you know, you do have the four board wipes if you need them. And uh, if we ever get into the mid-game where we end up doing more, more, uh, you know, more powerful type of opponents uh, or bigger threats on the field that we just can't exile, maybe there's some hexproof on there or something like that. You know, we've got a couple of big guns in there too. And then if we lose something, we do still have the one copy of Repair and Recharge that odds are good we're going to draw it, draw it sometime during the match. Um, it's it's just the way that arena treats it's the way arena treats me at least you let me know if your mileage is different but uh it's this is a very fun deck i like it like i said i think we just went undefeated so you know there's that i don't I have no idea what would happen you know what it is it's a trick arena wants me to break my rule and take this into ranked where they can just massacre me upside and down so i'm I, should i fall for it what do you think <laughs> let me know if you want to see ranked battles on this or not Anyway, leave me a comment. Remember to like and subscribe. Um, and uh, sometime in the future, we'll do a repair and recharge deck with planeswalkers. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.